Are you starting college and want to kind of get a jump on your pre-med journey? By the end of this video, you will know the most crucial aspects of the medical school journey so that you can kind of anticipate what you need to do and best prepare. So from extracurriculars to internships, volunteer, research, etc., we got you covered. All right. So these experiences not only enhance your applications, but also deepen and clarify your personal journey to medicine. So that's important, right? You're not only doing things for your resume, you're doing things to really clarify your place within medicine ideally in the future specifically I'll be sharing five of the most successful extracurricular activities for pre-meds so that you can yes stand out but also kind of truly clarify and think about how your journey to medicine should like how you should be the architect of that journey and because we like to celebrate our students wins we are I'm recording this in September we already have about 15 students with interview invites coming in more I see like emails coming in as I'm recording this with names of universities on with like university programs on the subject line so I know there's more in my inbox and I have a select few that I was lucky to work with from high school to college college to med school and med school to residency so it's really kind of such a beautiful journey and with the right guidance and with support you won't feel this kind of like isolating, stripping of your kind of faculties and human dignity. It should be a, an enjoyable process. Yes, it's stressful, but it, it can be enjoyable. So let's talk about what you should be thinking about. Let's get started. If you want more information on structure and how to do your personal statement and your activities, watch these videos. I'll link them above and we can go from there. So step one, clinical experiences, right? The admissions committee wants to see that you've spent time within a healthcare environment that you have worked directly with patients. This could be anything from shadowing physicians to working as an EMT, scribing, CNA. The key is to demonstrate that you've been exposed to the realities of, of patient care, that you understand the day-to-day -day responsibilities and grind of healthcare professionals. You are not gonna say in your personal statement that you understand the life of a physician. You're not there yet. Pro tip. Don't just log hours, make meaningful connections with healthcare professionals, mentors, with patients. Reflect on these experiences. You have four years plus if you take a gap year to really kind of nurture these relationships and have a document ready, whether it's like your working CV or something or notes on a phone, but really start documenting details of these experiences so that you have material that you can draw from for your application later on. I always tell students, I always advise students to journal about patient experiences that have been memorable, details, sensorial details, see, hear, taste, touch, what was said, what was the ambience around. You never know when these details to recall them are gonna be important for writing your personal statement or activity section. All right, number two is research. It's not required for a few programs, but it is incredibly valuable, right? Especially required, probably, right? But you wanna look at specific program details for research-focused med medical school programs. So you want to have the ability to talk about how you contributed to a scientific community, what you learned, so how you made an impact and what that kind of community or research lab project, how did that impact you and how you see your role as a physician scientist in the future. So an example, one student I worked with participated in a research project. They studied the impact of social determinants of health on cardiovascular system. The research can directly impact patients. It could be very high level wet lab, kind of looking at specific, you know, scientific details that does not kind of directly correlate with patient outcomes, but you want to kind of get in there. You want to get into the weeds of thinking about what you're doing and why you're doing it and being intentional about your experience. That student in particular was very interested in cardiology and just kind of that research showed how intentional they were in selecting the experiences that they were leading and they were kind of taking on. Okay, so step three and very important as well is community outreach. So volunteering, kind of you going out there and taking part in a community effort, in a community service of some sort, or you kind of starting one, seeing a problem and you kind of doing your part to remedy that situation, to narrow that inequity. So medical schools are looking for compassionate individuals who are committed to serving others, right? To serve patients, but to be a community leader as a physician. And so engaging in service is, especially in underserved areas demonstrates your dedication to improving public health to emphasize your ability and interest in serving diverse patient populations so it's it's a very interesting and important component of your pre-medical journey so example I had a student who volunteered at a free clinic and participated in a health education program for at-risk 
youth. And it was a fantastic way of showing their commitment to service, their interest and commitment to education, and kind of you know improving medical literacy, especially for, for younger populations and demographic, demographics for, for this student in particular. Another student I know volunteered at a mobile clinic, so they provided healthcare services to unhoused populations in their city. This experience not only enriched their understanding of public health and the public health needs in their community, but it offered a very powerful story for their personal statement and then another one for one of their most meaningful experiences in the activity section. So tip, focus on long-term commitments. Yes, you may have short-term commitments here and there, but a one-day beach cleanup is not gonna be as powerful as kind of months and months or a couple years in a community outreach effort that you kind of sustained, that you've continued to do. So are you taking the right steps to become the strongest pre-med and med school candidate? Make sure to subscribe to this channel, to jump on our mailing list so you don't miss one of our videos or one of our tips, and we can start a dialogue and see kind of, you know, how you're doing in your journey. I'd love to, to chat with you. All right, so the next section is thinking about leadership roles. So you don't wanna kinda of raise your hand and be like president of everything, right? You wanna be, again, intentional. But how are you leading in a student organization? Did you found a health initiative? Are you serving as a team captain for a sports a club, something kind of on campus, off campus? I have a student this cycle that um, founded a running club, loves to run, had some buddies that they were running with and they kind of made it a community thing and it was beautiful and they kind of made it very grassroots and now it's like in three cities because his uh, buddies are in other kind of undergrads, right? You wanna think about how can you inspire others? How can you build community and embrace and extend belonging for others? And if you can do that with a leadership role, that'd be great. I have another student who started a mental health awareness club on campus and they kind of brought on university approved events, led discussions, collaborated with local mental health professionals to provide resources for students. I um, mean, they partnered with their mental health department resources on their campus. It highlighted not only leadership skills, it highlighted their commitment to addressing mental health concerns, which is a crucial issue in today's healthcare landscape, but it was particularly interesting and personal to the student as well. So it showed that it was intentional in their kind of application building process. So don't just list leadership roles, right? Discuss the impact you made, the skills that you gained, and then if you're focusing on impact, how it impacted you, how you impacted it, then you're really kind of showing that you have assessed, that you have valued what the situation, what the experience, means to you and in your journey, not just, okay, I'm checking this box, right? I did this, I did that, I did this. So you wanna be intentional. Finally, let's talk about personal passion projects, right? This could be anything from starting a blog. I've had students start a cooking blog, one on healthcare topics, conducting independent research, um, I had a student who did an independent research um, course and then continued working on that translational research. A unique hobby that ties your interest to medicine, perhaps, or that has nothing to do with medicine. You really kind of, you can show, especially in your activity section, your interest in other things outside of medicine because that kind of worldly or expansive interest, set of interest, if they're not too thin, right, if they're deep and sustained, can add value to then your commitment to medicine. I had a student who created a podcast discussing health disparities and invited um, physicians onto, onto the pod to talk, uh, to have like, you know, one-on-one -on -one interview. So there's so many ways to really get involved, to really kind of build a passion project that's something that kind of drives your interest, can deepen your ties to the healthcare field, and really kind of help you stand out. But it could be something that really opens doors for you in a very interesting way too. So this is your chance to show the admissions committee that you are more than your GPA and your MCAT score, right? And you'll have, yes, your application is your journey to medicine, but all of these kind of side, not hustles, but side kind of projects or the leadership and volunteer and clinical, they're really kind of the same, a different side of the same coin type thing. Of coins have like multiple sides and not just two. But basically you wanna kind of think about everything has its place in the pre-med journey. So these are the five, basically kind of highest value, successful pre-medical extracurriculars. You want to find how you kind of access the five intentionally for you and your interest in your kind of background. 
And so I hope the, the examples are, are interesting and varied enough that you can start kind of thinking about your own. Start, you know, um, tapping into older yet upperclassmen. So what are the juniors and seniors doing? If you are a part of a student medical association, where are they shadowing? Where are they kind of getting clinical hours? Where are they researching? So really kind of think about like lean into the resources you have available, even if you don't think that they're there right now make those kind of connections slowly and surely and the worst thing they can say is no and you can say okay thank you and then you walk away and you go to someone else you really want to stand out you really want to deepen your awareness of the medical field and in so doing you will stand out right because your messaging your stories and your application will be that much more enriched by unique experiences to you and your journey to medicine i hope that was helpful please give us a like share with your pre-med friends and when you are ready to start writing i have so many videos i will link a playlist and you can kind of get started there thanks for watching and i'll see you soon bye